Hello and welcome to Philosophy 5, the channel where we discuss and debate different philosophical ideas. Today we are focusing on some political philosophy and looking into the works of John Stuart Mill and his theory around liberty as well as individual freedom of expression and freedom of speech. Excellent. So, John Stuart Mill was a 19th century English philosopher and is widely seen as one of the most important contributors of classical liberalism. In his political philosophy, Mill is concerned with how free an individual can be in the face of an all-powerful state or government. Mill understood that in the days past, there was absolute and sometimes tyrannical rule by monarchs, emperors and aristocracies. Granted, this was changing in the early modern world to a more democratic system, however, Mill was still concerned with what can be described as tyranny of the majority, whereby control and force can still be exercised on each individual by mob rule. The threats to liberty by the state are always there. Even if it is by old or traditional methods or new modern ways, the individual can still face coercion, suppression and forced conformity. So, how should the individual be treated by the state? In Mill's 1859 book On Liberty, he comes up with the theory that is meant to serve as the best relationship between the individual and the state in society. This work has gone on to influence politics in a major way across the Western world and in fact across all liberal democracies. Interesting. Probably the main question of political philosophy is, when can the states exercise power over the individual? When should the government or the people of a society force us as individuals to act or not to act? And how much control can they have over our lives? Mill's solution to this question was simple. He states, The object of this essay is to assert one very simple principle. That principle is that the sole end for which mankind are warranted, individually or collectively, in interfering with the liberty of action of any of their number is self-protection. That the only purpose for which power can be rightfully exercised over any member of a civilized community against his will is to prevent harm to others. His own good, either physical or moral, is not a sufficient warrant. This has come to be known as the harm principle. Basically, no one, no person, no state, no government, no ruler, absolutely no one can control what you do unless your actions are harming others. Individuals should be granted full and complete liberty to act how they want, think how they want, be who they want, providing they are not harming anyone else. Even if their actions harm themselves, people should still have this freedom. This is the basis of liberalism. We can be who we want as long as no one else is directly harmed by our actions. We must live and let live. We must grant people the complete freedom to be who they are and we must never exercise force or coercion upon anyone unless it is to save others from harm. Yes, I understand, but the word harm can be quite a broad term. How exactly are we defining this? I think it's fairly obvious and intuitively recognisable. We would label harm as causing any physical injury, destruction of someone's property or rights. Hmm. So this is the basic liberal principle. We have complete freedom and liberty unless our actions restrict the freedom and liberty of others. Now, central to this main liberal principle stems three following principles and that is to grant individuals with freedom of speech, freedom of character, and freedom of action. Right. It is very important to the liberty of the individual that they are allowed to say what they want, to vocalize their thoughts and allow for discussion. Now, freedom of speech is most important in calling out injustices, being able to vocalize discontent and anger towards your government and not being silenced. The moment an individual has restrictions put on their speech is the moment what we can say becomes controlled. The government can then silence anyone who disagrees with them, allowing them to do what they want when they want without being challenged. We must therefore 
put no restrictions on any type of speech. People must be allowed to say whatever they want. Their views cannot be silenced because we could very easily end up living in a tyrannical rule, unable to speak out. Yes, of course, I completely understand this and the benefits of freedom of speech. However, does Mill think there should be no limits at all to speech, even allow people to say lies and falsehoods? Yes, indeed. Mill argued that only good could come from allowing people to have complete freedom of speech. According to Mill, if someone makes a statement, this statement will either be true, partially true or false. Right. If it is true, then by allowing free speech, we have discovered and discussed a factual statement. If it is partially true, we can have a conversation, discuss with others and hopefully reach the full truth. And if it is false, the expression of this false speech will allow us to think about and discuss and expose the falsity for everyone and again reach the actual truth. So essentially, no matter what speech is being exercised, it will ultimately lead to the benefit and betterment of society. I see. Freedom of character and action is also very important as it allows people to be exactly who they are. Whether you want to worship a particular religion, make a particular song or paint a piece of art, whether you want to love a particular person or dress a particular way, we need to be able to express who we are and be who we are. Mill saw this liberty in character and action as a net benefit to society. Firstly, individuals can be happy in who they are and be their true selves, but in addition to this, the diversity in thought and character will only enrich society. We will have people expressing themselves in different ways, creating new art, new inventions, new fashion and new ideas. Once we lift the restrictions off humanity, it can grow and flourish and bring the whole human race further along. We must give all individuals the space and freedom to help shape a better, diverse and more interesting planet for everyone and aid in the advancement of the human race. Fascinating. So this is the main principles of Mill's liberalism and I would say the backbone of our modern societies. People should be free to live how they want, providing they do not cause harm to others. This liberty should include freedom of speech, freedom of character and freedom of action. This liberal world will result in a better world for all. A great political philosophy. And yes, prima facie, we would all want to live in a liberal society following Mill's principles of liberty. However, when you dig a little deeper, you do find some problems with Mill's theory. Really? Yes. Let's start with freedom of speech. I fully understand the importance of freedom of speech and the fear that comes with any restrictions. However, I do not think any reasonable person would want absolutely no restrictions on speech. There are clearly circumstances where saying certain things should be prohibited. Like what? Well, what if someone starts a vocal campaign promoting violence upon a certain person or a certain group of people? Their hatred and prejudice leads them to start a major campaign calling for violence or destruction of property to someone who is completely innocent, they have done nothing wrong. Now, what reasonable person would allow such speech to take place? Okay, you've probably picked the most extreme example, but still, if we allow complete freedom of speech, then this abhorrent and evil view will obviously be challenged. People will be alerted to the sheer malevolence of what is being proposed, and they will protest against it. Yes, but sometimes it is about the charisma and the way things are said, more so than what is actually said. People can win debates just by the way and the method of debating rather than the substance of the argument. A charismatic speaker can influence and even brainwash people into believing falsehoods or acting in a horrible way. Fair enough. I suppose in that situation the harm principle can come into effect. What their speech is being used for is essentially to cause harm. So I think restrictions on free speech, if they go against the harm principle, seems fair and legitimate. Okay, let's focus on the harm principle then. I do not think it is right that we cannot intervene or exercise force over someone's actions if they are self-harming. In fact, I would say we are morally responsible to act if we see that someone's actions are causing harm to themselves. But if it's their choice and they are not harming anyone else with their actions, just themselves, then why should you use force over them? Why should you stop them? Because they are harming themselves. But it is their choice. I'm not saying we leave them alone, we of course try to help them. 
we just cannot exercise any force in changing their behavior because ultimately it is their choice. Not necessarily. If someone is addicted to narcotics or suffering from mental health issues, maybe they do not fully know what they are doing, or maybe they are powerless to stop. They might not be thinking right. Surely there are situations where we can use force to stop someone harming themselves. Hmm, well now this gets complicated because where do you draw the line as to who can and cannot consent to self-harm? Yes, but you can also blur the lines on harm to others as well. This is by no means clear cut. Really? Well, yes, of course. Is the distributor of tobacco and alcohol responsible for the harm it causes? Is the chef of a fatty burger and fries responsible for the health conditions it can cause? Yes, but the people who buy this choose to buy it and choose to consume it. Yes, and if it didn't exist, they would not have the choice. The fact that it is made available and plays on the more addictive parts of our psyche means the harm has been created by the manufacturers. If they didn't make it, the harm would not exist. We take this approach with most strong narcotics, but the argument can easily be made for fast food and alcohol and the rest. The manufacturers are causing harm, should this go against the harm principle. Hmm. In addition to this, the harm principle doesn't really take into account emotional pain, which is very real and very painful. Now, can I use my freedom of speech to launch a hate campaign on someone that criticizes their looks and personality, that spreads lies and rumors about them? I am not causing any physical harm. I am not advocating for others to cause physical harm but it is causing emotional harm. Most people would say this is horrible behavior and shouldn't be allowed. Are we then happy in a liberal society to allow such behavior? But emotional harm becomes hard to quantify. A true and factual statement can cause emotional harm, or you can say can cause offense. Even comedy can cause offense or emotional harm. I think if we start restricting free speech based on offense, then we will lead down a very dangerous road. Could the government silence any opposition because it has caused the sovereign offence? Yes, I see your point, but the extremes can and do exist and they need to be addressed. Yes, I understand. If you would like the script to this video and you would like to help support the channel, then please check out the Philosophy Vibe Political Philosophy ebook available on Amazon. Also, this script is part of the Philosophy by Paperback Anthology, Volume 3, Ethics and Political Philosophy. This is a big collection of all our ethics and political philosophy scripts. This is great for someone who wants a nice, concise overview and for anyone studying these topics academically. This too is available on Amazon. All purchases really help us out a lot. Links are below. But that's all the time we have for now. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed the vibe. And what does everyone else think? Who thinks Mill's liberty and liberal principles are the best to base society on? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and share. And for more philosophical debates, please subscribe to the channel. Take care, and we look forward to seeing you all soon. Bye-bye.